no YouTube, no social media following, no day trading, no drop shipping. So I make about $3,800 a month. This is kind of a conservative estimate because it does vary a little bit due to my other streams of income such as YouTube, uh, but it doesn't really affect the number too much, but it does range from around $3,700 to $4,000. My name is Chloe. I'm a second slash third year. I'm 20 years old, student at UChicago. The first source of income is obviously YouTube. I average around $200 a month uh, from passive income mainly with around like what 13,000 subscribers and currently I believe 80 videos up. There was one month where it particularly was more because I have one particular video blew up in total got me around $400 so that particular month it was a spike but I didn't calculate that into this budget and then the next thing is uh, cryptocurrency and NFTs so again this is a massive variable number but during my gap year for example I made about I think $7,000, $6,000 to $7,000 in total from cryptocurrency. So my gap year during that time period is around six months. So if you average it out, it's about a thousand per month. But again, I don't really take that into account. So the main way I make money is from teaching tuition. And let me just clarify a few things. One, this tuition occurs entirely online. I teach in groups of three. So it's me versus three other students um, in an online format. But mostly I share my screen and kind of tutor. Mainly, I focus on English literature, high school writing, literary writing. I do do some PSAT, SAT courses sometimes, very rarely. So every week, I work on average eight hours to nine hours in actual tuition time. And then for pre-planning and classes, it's an additional maybe two hours. So in total, I work around eight to ten hours a week. My target age audience is, or like the grade audience, started from around sixth grade to seventh grade. Um, and then I quickly expanded to all the way from 6th grade to currently 9th grade or sometimes even 10th grade I've taught before and my majority of like students are focused around 8th and 9th grade so like high school or like early high school going into high school students so for my high school specifically there is a different like grading system for classes so for example english is split up into non-native and native and then within native you have like standard standard plus honors and honors plus so what i have going for me is i've been in honors plus classes basically my entire life in this school so for about seven years so i didn't know what the most difficult material would look like so at the beginning my target audience were either people who are struggling in these honors plus classes or kids who were in honors who wanted to go to honors plus who you know they needed to take the whole test you need to improve your grades to be upgraded by a class so my teaching method is very straightforward it's you tell me what results you want i will devise a plan to get you there and i have very specific milestones that i will create after i've assessed a student's growth so i will ask for past essays past like testing past uh writings whatever and then i will give them my personal score and then i'll also take their like school grades into account so this is my price breakdown as of right now after three years of working in this field so i definitely did not start off with this number but this is where i am now i'll report the numbers in rmb because that is how these kids pay me um, and then i will report the total number in usd on the screen as well so each person pays me 250 rmb per hour i teach three kids per class so you times that by three i teach seven to eight classes a week so that's eight times 750, which is around 6,000 RMB. Counting one month as having like 4.5-ish weeks, for example, then that would be 25,000 RMB per month, which would total to 3,848.88 USD, according to like today's exchange rate. This money is my personal savings. Um, I save at least 40% of this money for the past few years and the rest of it goes uh, partially into my rent but i cover my living expenses purely from youtube and some other freelance side jobs that i do like my redrawing and do some photography um, as well as like interest on some of my investments that's it so i don't live off of this money i don't count it into my living expenses other than rent and utilities which are like the big ones so i first got started when i was in high school i had a brother who is four years younger than me and it kind of started off as me kind of tutoring him naturally uh, during my junior year of high school so when I was an IB student and at the time his friends came over one day to our house and they were prepping for a debate competition so I was just like I do debate like I did debate and I was decently good at it so I'll just give you some pointers so I sat there and it turned from like one hour session to like a three hour session and then they were coming to my house regularly and then one time my brother was like oh some of my other friends want to join in on your session too and I was just like okay well this is becoming kind of a project so I talked to my 
mom and she was like, you know what? Why don't we pick some sort of subject that you're good at or you're interested in? And you just, you know, should start doing like start tutoring Jake and his friends. That's basically how it started. It really started to take off. I started to take more students um, around senior year of high school. So this was after I'd already gotten into U Chicago. So the only thing I had to worry about were IB classes. So I had a lot of free time on my hands, essentially. I decided to start, you know, going to school, staying after school a little bit more to tutor these like kids one on one. So in the beginning, it was kind of disorganized. I just kind of asked my brother's friends, like, is anyone interested? I just charged them like a really low rate, um, lower than US minimum wage actually at the time, but it was more for because I just want to experience and also because it was super fun for me. I really love English writing in general. I mean, I'm writing a book. At that time, I only took around seven to eight students in total and it was more like one-on-one -on -one sessions. But I quickly realized that I didn't like one-on-one. -on -one. one, because it was too much dependent on this individual student. And second of all, each student's strengths and weaknesses, I feel, can be more easily expedited. Like their improvement can be easily expedited by having other students in the same group, right? It's like, I think some people just study better when there's another person similar in grade, similar in level, maybe better or worse in some other things. And when you put them together, you teach them together, they kind of like rub off each other, they get more energized, it becomes like a friendly competition. It's just, I think a group environment was better. So I mentioned that my growth particularly happened the summer before college and like the latter half of my senior year in high school. And the reason for that is because it was near finals Time. So it was like the big test that kind of showed like my students improvement and to my like really like it was amazing But to my surprise a lot of my students either succeeded in like going up by a grade So like the honors students went to honors plus the standard plus students went to honors or they had like gotten the highest uh, Final scores that ever received and so we got an overwhelming amount of like positive comments from the parents of these children And they were just really happy in general it, if you didn't know there are a lot of like WeChat group chats featuring just like parents and and so these parents were sharing like, oh my god, my daughter slash son got amazing grades this time um, and it's all thanks to like Chloe. So all of a sudden I had a lot of business and I really needed to figure out what my limits were. Um, and I kind of mentioned this in my Gap Year Q&A video, but that's why the summer before college, I just worked a lot because I just kind of wanted to figure out what was comfortable for me, what was too much, what was manageable and all of that. And this is also the time where I started devising my lesson plans. So I will put a sample of my lesson plan here. So I teach text by text which means I will select texts either based on your curriculum in school or just stuff that I like and I think you will benefit off of. And then I will teach you everything from like analysis to reading to comprehension and then ultimately to outlining, writing and planning and editing. Right, so this is kind of like my process. Um, so what ended up happening was I settled with around five to six groups of three each that I wanted to take with me when I started college. And so that's exactly what I did. The time scheduling was really painful because throughout college, um, because of time difference, obviously it's like a 13 hour time difference, I can only teach them either their weekday nights, so my weekday mornings, or their weekend mornings, aka my weekend nights. Both of those options were kind of detrimental to like a first year college student, right? Because like it's either one, like wake up at 7 a.m. every day or number two, your Friday nights and Saturday nights were just gone. So for me, I had to make a lot of like sacrifices in order to keep up my streak, but I really didn't want to stop teaching. So I decided to stick with the morning method. So there were multiple days in a week when I had to wake up at 7, even though my earliest class was at 10 a.m., I had to wake up at 7 get my lesson plan ready, get my like tutoring ready, review all the notes I've take, taken for each student, and then teach them for an hour. And then move on to the next student and teach them for an hour. So it'd be like 7 to 8, and then 8 to 9 a.m. And I would rest for an hour, and then my class would start at 10. So right now, I've kind of changed the schedule to make it their weekend mornings, aka my weekend nights. So basically Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. to like past midnight, I'm not available at all. That's the sacrifice I have to make for this, which I don't even view as a sacrifice because I genuinely enjoy teaching so much. I have scaled down my operation, actually. I'm sticking to my seven to eight classes a week, and I'm not currently taking newer students. However, I do this system where I graduate students out of my cycle. So when I think your writing is at a level where I think you can get like A's for the rest of high school, because that happened before, I would just be like, you don't have to come to this class anymore, which is kind of ironic for me to say, because of course, you know, you want them to keep paying you. But for me, it's more about doing good work for the students and seeing their improvement. And I've become so proud of these kids. So sometimes I'll just be like, you don't need to come to this class anymore. So we can either continue on a different path where I just teach you like, 
sometimes like college level stuff where we just read like cooler, more difficult texts, or you can use this time for something else. Sometimes they choose to stay on, sometimes they do take my advice and graduate, in which case then I'll go scout out potential new students, which usually I have like a waiting list. So I'll just like pick a couple of students from there and be like, hey, do you guys have time around this time slot? If you do, this is my process. I'll give them the whole spiel that I just gave to you guys. And the last one is how you can use this as a method. So I do want to emphasize that these kids are in Shanghai. And what this means is that education as a whole is a very, like a vastly different industry than in the United States or I believe in any other Western country. Like the baseline for how much people charge for tuition, education, SAT prep, college prep even. Sorry, that's my cat again. Um, the baseline for how much they charge is just much higher. Like I'm not extorting any of these people. I charge like the industry average, if not lower than the industry average, I definitely start off as very low on the spectrum. And then now I'm kind of like at the industry average. For college apps for SAT prep, this amount that I just stated can go up by like five folds. And I know some college people who are like, you know, like they're like working people, but they have like college agencies who, no lie, make like 70,000 US dollars from one student. Like, one one student my personal opinion on that is that that's too much and you shouldn't be paying that amount for anything but for chinese parents who really want their kids to do well i can kind of see why they would do that but i really don't want to be on that end of the spectrum which is why i've stayed away from psat sat college stuff and i focus mainly on english writing and literature so for you if you didn't study in china um, and you don't really have access to this market or you don't really want to i think just as a general rule tutoring is just a really solid method for earning some extra income at your leisure it's not really like a minimum wage job where you have to work like a nine to five uh, but it does have some requirements right like you need to have some sort of like experience or testimonials or some sort of background uh, and of course you have to be like good at whatever subject it is that you're teaching so there are some innate requirements but I personally think that if you're a good student, you study well, you did well in high school, this is definitely something you should go into. I wouldn't recommend this as a full-time job for anybody because it's a little bit too volatile for my taste. Going on like Fiverr um, just to kind of test the waters, I think is a great idea. You should charge very low prices to get people to hire you and then just see how it is like tutoring people online because it is a weird process you have to get used to but I would suggest you try that out first at like yes like lowballing yourself but you're doing it for the experience just a little bit so do that and after you kind of figure out your teaching style and niche you can either one look to your high school and offer to teach kids of like a lower grade in a specific subject or two find agencies but just a word of caution please don't be on the side that kind of like cheats people out of their money by not putting a lot of effort into their classes um, and that's kind of the thing I wanted to end with it's like every time I tell people that this is the amount of money I make this is the students I teach um, they immediately assume that you're like cheating Chinese kids out of their money but if you've seen me teach you know that this is not an easy process I've done this every single week for multiple hours for two and a half to three years which is actually more than I can say for any other thing I've done regularly in my life and I think consistency is something that people don't really think about when they think about how hard it is to do something I think that applies to like YouTube or Twitch or stuff like that too where it's like you really have to be consistent with something that you really like in order to do it well yeah that's basically uh, the case okay thank you for watching and see you guys this Saturday bye bye